Hey internet, Harris here. So iOS 14 brings a lot of subtle tweaks that improve productivity, that eliminate distractions, that help streamline the experience on iOS, and adds more productivity features than ever before. In this video, I wanna explore the benefits to productivity and the shrinking of distractions on iOS 14 for both the iPad and iPad OS 14 and the iPhone for iPhone OS, that's not a thing, for iOS 14. And this video is brought to you by iMazing, the best backup solution for your iOS and iPadOS devices. More on that later. So a lot of this actually revolves around Notes, and Notes is one of my most used applications by far, and especially on the iPad, it has gotten even better. So with the past couple versions of iOS, we got things such as checklists and charts, and graphs and document scanning and things like that. And we have all those things, but now we have a few more options. So if we're looking at the iPad, we can click these three buttons up at the top and there's now an option for lines and grids. So we finally have some grid styles that you can use for templates when you are writing on your iPad, especially with the Apple Pencil. So you have the blank document, of course, but then you also have kind of like the uh, college ruled paper, I would say, and then you can have super wide rule and then just ridiculously wide. But then you also get a grid and then a larger grid and then a super large jumbo grid that looks more like tic-tac-toe. But these are all awesome templates that will help you use your Apple Pencil and annotate better than ever before on your document. Now with this you also get new Apple Pencil features. So if we go into the Apple Pencil mode of course we have our standard scribble and all these kind of things. But we have a few new options here. For starters, there's now a new shape detection. So if you draw a shape and hold it, it'll auto make that shape. So you can see a few different shapes here. Now it's not perfect because you can't adjust these after you make it. So like if I were to select a shape, it's not a whole lot I can do with it, including I can't resize it, but of course I can still drag it around. Now this also works for straight lines. So if we go back, I can draw a straight line vertically, horizontally, I can make a little chart or a graph just like that. And this works for all the options, so I can do a highlighter, straight highlighter, and I can add shapes here. So that's pretty nice, and that is a new feature here. Now perhaps the more interesting new feature with this is this little A tool, which you can find to the left of the pen tool now. And this will transcribe your handwritten text and it will digitize it into just standard text that you can copy and paste and move. So for instance, if I write hello, boom, it makes that hello. And I can say this is new and it translates it, uh, transcribes it. So it doesn't work perfectly for things such as math. So if I do 2.4 times 10 to the negative seventh, it's just gonna do 2.4 times 10 to the seventh. So it's not perfect, but that it is new. So you can write out all of your notes and it will auto transcribe that into text. And then you can also do other things such as highlight it, and then you can copy it or drag it or move it around. You can also erase just by scribbling. You can combine and split words by drawing up and down, and you can move that around. So that is all new here and it's awesome. Now when we go to the home screen, the iPad already had kind of like this today view on your home screen where you had semi widgets off to the side. And we still have that on the iPad. But what's more interesting is that on the iPhone, we have this now too. So you can add widgets just by holding onto your home screen and then you press the plus button up in the corner and it gives you a list of different widgets that you can add to your home screen and there will be third party ones coming in the future. Now this can be particularly useful for productivity because you can get to information much quicker without having to launch an app. So I can really see this being useful for reminders and for notes and for weather and calendar, things like this. So you might wanna check on something without launching an application, but also for reminders, you can just check off things right away. So for instance, if I wanna add a reminder, tile, I can get a few different options of what kind of reminder widget I want to add and I just add it and I'll add it to my home screen and you can see that right on my home screen I have these different reminders so I can clearly see that without really having to swipe anywhere. Now I can always go to my right and I can see all these more widgets and these can all be added to my home screen. There's also smart tiles that will allow you to just flip through different tiles. So for instance I have notes here and then there's podcast, then there's map, 
and then there's reminders. So that you can do the smart widgets and you can even stack them, which is super cool. So for instance, if I add a stocks widget, I make it a full screen. I can add it right over the previous one. And now I can have a stack of multiple widgets. So this is gonna be great for a lot of different productivity and notes apps and reminder apps that you have on your phone, especially when third party developers make their widgets for the iPhone, you're gonna be able to really customize your home screen. So before we go any further, I wanna talk about iMazing, which is the sponsor for this video. So backing up your iPad or iPhone isn't the most sexy thing to do, and it's not something you might even think about often, but it should be. And iMazing is a great piece of software with some free features to check out that not only gives you very thorough and secure backups of all of your Apple devices, but also does things such as diagnose battery health, transfers files from your Mac or PC to your iPhone with drag and drop. You can export voicemails, print iMessages, transfer entire photo libraries in a breeze and so much more. There is a premium version of it, which you can actually get for 30% off using my discount code, but it's the best way to keep your phone, your iPad, your iPod, safe, secure, and backed up. It's always good to have backups, and with this, it's so easy to transfer anything you need, diagnose problems on your iPhone, and more. So check it out for free with the link in the description. Now, the next super cool feature is on your home screen as well. So we already talked about widgets, but because there's widgets, you now can actually get rid of all of your apps and just put them in the new app library. So the app library is very similar to Android. This is where all of your apps live and there's an automated curated folder system that organizes them or you can also search. But what's super cool is that you can hold down on your home screen to get into widget mode and then you tap the buttons at the bottom and it gives you this awesome list of all of your home screens and you can choose to enable or disable certain home screens. So for instance, if you wanted only just a select few apps such as maybe mail and camera and phone and messages and stuff like that, but you wanted to hide all of your other applications, you can do that by deselecting those other pages. All of a sudden, all I have is one page with a couple widgets and then I have no apps on my home screen outside of my dock. And when I swipe left, I just have this app drawer, which has all my apps, which means that I'm not distracted by apps that I might habitually press. I'm not distracted by notifications. So that way when I unlock my phone, I go to my home screen, I don't see any apps, but if I need an app, I can always search for it in the app library. Now, Apple also has a new night mode and sleep feature. So when it's ready for bedtime, if you set it for bedtime, it'll give you a little reminder and then also dim your screen and mute notifications. And you can also have it set to do other things automatically. So this is great to put it in a low brightness, kind of low power, um, low notification mode for when you're getting ready to bed. And of course, sleep is just, it's immeasurable how important it is. And just having a phone that's less distracting, less bright, less obtrusive, all these things at night is going to help with sleep and help you to be distraction free when you're outside of the workday. And I think this will definitely help with productivity and just a better phone experience. So the next feature is really cool. And I made a dedicated video about this on the iDownload blog channel. So I'll leave that link down below, but you can actually double tap on the back of your iPhone and it will perform a certain action. You can also triple tap. Now you can find this under the accessibility settings on your phone and then touch and then back tap. But for instance, I can do a double tap on the back to launch my multitasking. So you can see this right here, double tap on the back and it'll launch my multitasking. But you can also customize this with Siri shortcuts. So you can do a shortcut for downloading a file or setting on an alarm or starting a video. There's all these different things that you can customize this with. Really, there's no limits when you can use Siri shortcuts. So you can double tap or triple tap the back of your phone to do whatever you want it to do. And this is a really interesting feature that you can make super useful and productive with however you customize it. Now, another feature that I really like is in messages. You can now pin conversations, including group chats and add group chat photos to your messages app. So you can have up to nine conversations pinned, and this is great for people and group chats that you frequent, so you don't have to go scrolling and looking for them to find them. You can also customize the group chat photo so that it's very easy to uh, find if you're just scrolling for it. It's great. So this just lives up top, and it's gonna help you just to find the contacts you communicate with the most. We have this feature in notes where you can pin certain notes. Well, now you can easily pin certain people or conversations just by swiping right on that conversation or long touching and pinning it. Also messages, you have the ability to only be alerted when somebody mentions you because that is a new feature in iOS 14 
where you can send messages to individual people inside a group chat just by kind of tagging them in the message. And you can choose to be only notified when you are mentioned so you don't have to be distracted by other messages that don't pertain exactly to you. This is something that you kind of have on the Mac where you can be notified if your name is mentioned. This is very similar to that and a great productivity feature. Now there's a new feature called App Clips on iOS 14. And this is basically developers making little NFC tags to launch very quickly a certain action. So for instance, I'm thinking of like a line bike. Uh, you go up to it and you wanna use it. You just use the NFC chip that they have programmed into it. And it will instantly launch like a half screen page where you can instantly pay and do what you need to do without having to launch the app and load a whole bunch of things. It's going to be secure, it's going to be fast, and it's going to be a great productivity feature when you're on the go and you just interact with things just via NFC and that's gonna be awesome. Voice Memos now gives you the ability to edit and enhance certain recordings, which is great. New editing features for your audio uh, is something that's very much needed. And it's also great because certain devices such as the new iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro 16 inch have much better microphones now so the fact that you also get a better voice memos app is awesome but you can also organize them and put them into different folders which is brand new and it's gonna be great for organizing your voice memos if you're somebody who uses a lot of them which i think a lot of reporters in a lot of different fields use voice memos a lot on their devices especially when it is supported on the apple watch iOS 13.4 also allows you to change your default web browser and mail client. So if there's a mail app or maybe you like Chrome or a different web browser a lot, you can actually make that default. So when you open up a link in something, it'll default to that web browser or that mail client, which is a huge new feature. Now, one of my favorite iOS 14 features or really iPad OS 14 features is the new compact spotlight search that looks a lot like it does on the Mac. So when you go into spotlight search by just swiping down on your home screen, your iPad or doing command space, it'll now not take up your whole screen, but just a little spotlight bar in the middle. Now, this is really great because a lot of times I'm doing um, a calculation or a conversion or just looking at somebody's contact, but it takes up the whole screen. So I can't continue doing what I was doing already on the iPad without that interrupting it. So now if I'm on a web page and I'm typing in some type of number, I can do that without it interrupting the whole thing. So I do 12 plus five, I can see the result of that, but I still have the iPad screen underneath. So if I need to type in multiple numbers while referencing the iPad, I can now do that. And the same for definitions and contacts and things like that. I can type things in and this doesn't take up the whole screen, which is awesome. Now also with the Apple Pencil is a new feature called Scribble. So if you have any type of text box on your iPad, whether it's in Safari, Twitter, email, anywhere, if you don't wanna type with your keyboard, you can just scribble and write it in with your Apple Pencil. So I can say baseball and really bad handwriting right now and it'll type in baseball and it will transcribe that just using the Apple Pencil. So if you're just using the iPad freehand and you wanna just quickly write something in instead of having to type it, you can do that with your Apple Pencil. But that's about it for this video. Let me know your favorite productivity feature for iOS 14 and iPadOS 14. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. But thank you so much for watching.